my name is Susan Ashley and welcome to my YouTube channel Susan Cassandra. Today I'd like to demystify the darkness just a little bit more for you. Now I've done a few videos on the role of the darkness, what you can do to help yourself in certain situations, but there's so much more and I'd like to share just a little bit more with you and how it works. Before I do, could you please like, subscribe and share these videos across the land? Because I'm relying on you. I don't monetize the videos, so I don't get a ranking with YouTube because I'm not making money for them. But I want to tell you the truth and I don't want to be invaded by ads. And I don't want to advertise people who I feel unethical because I can't choose those ads. So I'm relying on you to help me, to help us as a planet get rid of the darkness that has invaded every area of our life at the moment. One of the ways that the darkness is most prevalent is sex, sexuality. And what I discovered from working for years with people who've been sexually abused from all methods, whether it's satanic abuse, participating in human sacrifice, cutting up bodies, selling parts, it's all coming to light now, but I knew about this. I was working with it 35 years ago. I dedicated my life to it. And in doing so, I understood a lot about not only the darkness and the satanic realms, but I also understood a lot about sexual energy and its power. And I understand energetic signatures in a very deep way. I, I, I have this knack of being able to very fine tune an energetic signature and know exactly what it is. And what I came to understand from all of those years was that sexual energy is exactly the same vibration as money and creativity. And that's why women are abused so much in that arena. Because we, our sexual energy, is the bringer of life. We are the generators of life. And so our energy, our sexual energy, creates even more than a man's sexual energy. And I know that could be hard for some men to hear at this moment, but I want you to hear it without ego. I want you to listen to this in your heart because you know it's true. Women are the bringers of life. We are the givers of life. When you take and exploit our sexual energy for your own gratification and your own wallet, you are going against the universal law of life and you will pay a price for this. So when they harness this sexual energy, they do it in very perverse ways. And one of the ways that it's played out in the last 20 years and become more and more prevalent is through unfortunately, celebrities, through music, through movies, through all of this. So now we're seeing over the last 20 years, you know, we used to listen to music, it would make us happy, joyful. Now we listen to music and it drives us. It's a thumping, thumping beat, a beat that's not in harmony with our physical bodies. It's not joyful. It's angry. It's aggressive and it's sad and melodic, right? This music and the, and the images that go with it are, you know, women who are basically dry humping everyone on the stage. I have seen videos where women in the videos are on stage flashing their fanny and letting their fans touch their fanny. And if you have a problem with that, you are, there's something wrong with you because you're not able to express your sexuality because you're not free and open and this is perverse it's a perverse way and I see all these young women thinking they're and even little girls 
thinking their only value is their fanny and their ass and their tits. And it's revolting. There's nothing sexy about it. There's nothing sensual about it. And there certainly is nothing creative about it. It's abusive. It's the same as saying, you know, men shouldn't wank off in public. It's exactly the same. This is what women are being reduced to, all these stars. You know, the more hardcore sexual they can become, the better the sales. And what they're doing to your psyche and your children's psyche is perverse because, let me put it to you this way, the ones that are create, I'm not saying all of them create music like that, but the ones that are, are very, very popular. 40 million on Twitter and all the rest of it. And then now they're going to talk about whether or not you should be vaccinated and everything else like that. They're the spokespeople and they're insane. They're absolutely insane. They're driven by a satanic ritual. They're driven through greed and the need, their deep desire and need to be wanted, to be approved of, to be loved. And they get it through their fans. So let me explain what that does. Remember I said sexual energy, creative energy and money are all the same. So every time you think, I want to be the same as her. I want to look like her, dress like her. I want to, I want to just be like her. Some people go to the extremes. They get plastic surgery to look like these women. And then you give money to them. You buy their products. You buy their concerts. You buy their music. So now you're giving their money. And you're also giving your creative individuality because you want to look like them. You want to be like them. You want to mimic them. So you're giving them now all your energy, your life force. You're giving it to them. And they are getting richer and richer and more and more famous. And as they do that, they get involved with things that manipulate you and others even more. So that's what's happening with the women. And that's what's happening with women in general. If you look at advertising, Advertising over the generations, over the decades, has made a lot of money from the female form, right? Sex sells. Sexy girls sell. So <clears throat> if you've got this girl in a bikini lounging over this car, the image it gives the men, it's all, it's all psychologically directed at you. The image it gives this man, the belief, if I have that car, I'm going to get the sexy girl. If I've got that money, I'm going to get that sexy girl. That's what I'm going to have. And not only that, I can have three sexy girls, right? <clears throat> so what's happened is they have harnessed your sexual energy for their wallets. And yeah, sexual energy is amazing. And when you're young and you're full of life and you're full of hormones, you feel like you can do anything and you're exploring your sexual energy. It's a beautiful thing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not about shutting it down and not using it and feeling guilt and shame. And that's the other way they do it. So if it's not in the extreme, they do it through guilt and shame. You're frigid. You mustn't have sex before marriage. So there's these polar opposites, right? Because we're living in duality. And I can tell you now, the darkness has hold on both sides. The people who invest in vaccines also invest in vitamins, minerals and alternative foods like tofu and things like that. They're playing both sides. Doesn't mean they're good, but they're playing both sides for their wallet and nothing else because they've made money the god. Money is the all-empowered god. And what is money? Money is your life force. Money is your creativity. Money is your sexual flow. That's what money is. Now, I, I had a period of time where I worked with prostitutes. So I've worked with sexual energy on many different ways. I'm not a sexual therapist. I didn't, I, I didn't um, start out to be someone like that. Right, It just happened to, to me that um, I got involved in this sort of arena, let's say. So 
um, I had a lot of clients who were prostitutes and they'd be exhausted, you can imagine. So I'd teach them ways in which they could use their energy to actually <laughs> use it for themselves and not for the guy who's paying for it. It's very, and the, the madam who's controlling the whole thing or the pimp. It was very interesting and it worked, you know. But for me, that was kind of like, those people came into my life as an experiment. And I know that sounds awful, but it was a way of me being able to prove that what I had learned was accurate because I couldn't use those methods with these um, survivors of abuse because that would be too difficult for them. And it's not to say that those people who prostituted themselves weren't abused when they were younger, but not to the extent of a lot of the clients that I was working with. So having those prostitutes come to me was, was, a, it was a very interesting way of me seeing another way in which the energy works and how to use it for your advantage. Well, I shouldn't really say it like that, but anyway, you understand. Let's get back to the subject. This is a very serious subject for me, isn't it? I'm being very serious today. So let's look at, that's how it, that's how it affects women. And you're not realising it. And you're getting the message all the time that if you're not free, if you're not open to having sex with different partners, having sex with women or whatever, you know, having threesomes, group sex, orgies. If you're not okay with that, then you are, there's something wrong with you. This is the other side. There's something wrong with you. You're shamed, you're guilted. Religion plays a role in that, of course, a very big religion, but very big part of it. But if you, let's say you're a sensitive soul and it's, you kind of, on a soul level, understand that giving your sexual energy away to a bunch of blokes or, or whatever doesn't feel right for you it doesn't sit right you don't you don't it's not because of religion but you just don't feel it's your game you want a more committed partner but you're guilted into feeling that no one's ever going to love you because you're not willing to participate in that and that there's something wrong with you that you need to you know go out there and flash your fanny to a bunch of people to to show that you're unashamedly sexual hmm it's kind of like sexual bullying, isn't it? And how you choose to use your sexual energy is entirely up to you. So if you do want to have, if you're feeling like, you know, you've got a lot of sexual energy and you know how to use it, and you do want to have sex with multiple partners, but you're very aware that they're not draining you, that you're not doing it because you want love, and you're not doing it because you want a sense of approval or you want power over the men. If you're doing it for the right reasons and it's only to do with you, then that's okay. You're not lending your energy to the darkness. But I could almost guarantee you that if you sat down and you really went into it, you would find that you wouldn't want to do it like that. Right? So you'd find that you're probably lying to yourself on some level because all women really want is to be held, to allow themselves to be vulnerable. And when you're acting out sexually like that, you're the aggressor, you're not being vulnerable at all. So when a woman is really vulnerable, she opens up to all that she can be and a floodgate of energy starts to flow through her to manifest and create whatever, whatever you and your partner desire. And that can come in the form of a child. The most complicated, sophisticated form of manifestation is a child. And you, as a woman, are capable of that. Don't throw it away. Because someone sexually bullied you into feeling that yeah, you know, this is okay, because it's not okay. Now let's turn ourselves to the men for a moment. What the men are receiving sexually is, 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 is pretty bad as well. Because they're tying money to it. If I have money then all the women will love me. So they're making women a commodity they can purchase. And then you see all the music these men make. 
and everyone's giving them money and adoring them and saying, wow, I'd like to be like him. They want to mimic because they're young men. And what are they mimicking? The pimp, the gangster, the guy who's got the cars and all the women that he can sing about, taking it up the arse, taking it everywhere sideways. It's revolting. Anyone who actually really understands sexual energy is horrified at what these young men have become. And they're doing it for money. They're doing it for adoration. They're doing it for power and authority. That's what they're doing it for. But do they truly own themselves? Look how many turn to drugs, they turn to alcohol, they can't cope anymore. Because they know they want love. They don't want just this random sex and all these, you know, different women around them and they all become sex addicts and it's all so cool. It destroys their lives, you can see it. It destroys their lives. And you young men, you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be driven like that. And then of course you have the guilt and shame because you haven't made enough money. You don't have the six pack. You haven't screwed 10 chicks today. And so then you feel guilty and you feel shamed and you feel lesser because you're not the same as the guy on the screen and in the music video, you know, flicking money at the hooker. It's revolting. And you know it and something in your heart knows it. And then you feel really bad because you want it. But you don't have the, you think, the courage to go out and get it. It's not that. It's because you don't have the madness in you to treat a woman like that and degrade yourself like that. That's why you don't have it. Because you're more in your heart than you are in your head of greed. And these people who become celebrities and you're giving them all your money, you're giving them all your sensual energy, you're giving them all your life force and you have no idea. And then you wonder why your life isn't full and rich and you wonder why you're not getting what you want because you're all your energy is going to giving them what they want take your focus off them place it on yourself learn yoga learn breathing techniques learn to master your energy and direct it to yourself, to your family, to what you want. And this is how darkness plays with sexual energy. It has enslaved millions and billions of people in its web, making you all think there's something wrong with you because you don't have the heart to get engaged in it or making you lose yourself within it and then having to take drugs and alcohol to cope with what you've done to yourself. Please stop it. Regain your sovereignty of the most amazing energy that you have. I see this play out every day and I see people's sadness and their grief around it. I see women longing for love but thinking that love means they have to be perfect. They have to be the whore in the bedroom and the, you know, saint in the kitchen and everything else like that. It's not the case. You know, I'm not lovable enough because I weigh five kilos more than the girl in the video. I don't have the big boobs, so I better go buy some. Right? They're taking all your money, honey. All of your money. They're taking all your life force. And they're laughing all the way to the bank at how easy it was to manipulate you all into becoming so distant from your biggest power that you possess and giving it all to them. I hope you've had some light bulb moments from this conversation because it's really really important for you in going into 5D to understand what duality is you cannot go into 5D 
pushing away, pushing away the darkness and ignoring it, pretending it doesn't exist. Or pushing away the light, the truth, because it's inconvenient. Ah, oh, I don't want to speak up right now. So that's how the darkness gets to remain, because you are so intrinsically tied to it that you have no idea what's happened to you. And you have no idea what you've given away. And it doesn't mean you have to dress like Frau Haus, you know. You can still dress sensual. You can still dress sexy. Now let's look what's happened to women, you know. If a girl gets raped, the first thing they do is accuse her of dressing too provocatively. So you wonder why women lash out and want to dress like that. You know, because they think the way that they can be empowered is to take control over the men. But the key to their sexuality is to surrender. And they cannot surrender to a man who's abusing them. And you might think, oh, well, I'm not abusing her. I'm treating her nice. If you're treating her like a sexual object, you are abusing her. If you don't listen to what she says, you're abusing her. If you don't treat her as your equal in your decisions, you're abusing her. We all want to dress beautifully. We all want to feel beautiful. And that's all entangled in all of this. What we think is beautiful has been misconstrued. So go a little deeper inside yourself and think what is it that I truly, truly want because unless you're resonating with what you truly want, you're not going to get it. And that shadow, that darkness that resides in you, that's telling you all the time, you're not good enough unless you have this. I can't even tell you how many people have this waiting game they play with themselves and particularly women, they say, you know, when I've lost that 10 kilos or 5 kilos, then, then, you know, I'll meet the man. I'll meet the guy. Because, you know, I'll be perfect then. Not the case. Look around. Women who are comfortable in their bodies, women who feel confident, not confident in the way is aggressive. That's different. Women who feel confident in themselves. It doesn't matter if they're 50 kilos overweight. They'll find someone who loves them deeply and honors them. right? That's not what it's about. We all want to look good. I wouldn't go outside dressed like the bag lady myself. And it's not because um, of what other people might think. It's how I feel about myself. I like to wear clothes and wear things and dress, you know, particularly jewelry and things like that. I like to wear things that make me feel comfortable that express who I am as a person, right? There's nothing wrong with that. And if you, when you're young, I wore short shorts and I did all of that, you know. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying, don't give your energy away. Don't give your life force away. Don't give your money away to the darkness that's been manipulating you for many, many years. Do it because you want to do it, not because you've been told that's going to get you something. And I've sat in front of a lot of young men that are very confused. You know, they come and see me and they've got their beautiful, soft, strong men beautiful and they're so hurt because they can't find men who are mentors that have heart that are not willing to rip people off be unethical lie cheat steal uh, you know treat women like whores these young men don't want to do that 
and they feel like such outsiders and they're searching for men that can be mentors to them and they're in deep pain because they feel like a failure they feel that they're not real men because they don't the images they see of men are you know men uh, driving fancy cars and screwing everything that walks and treating women like shit and treating other men like shit because they're the authority because they've got more money and they're playing games with under the counter with cash okay there's nothing wrong with cash I shouldn't say that but you know what I mean doing dirty deals selling children right selling people selling drugs that kill people all because they want money selling a message through movies through music selling a message that they know is harmful and damaging but they do it for the money having businesses that steal intellectual property from other businesses I mean you even see it in the new age where someone invents something that's amazing against 5g and a person who's got a little bit of money steals it from them who's also in the new age and then puts it out as their product lovely this is how men behave women behave like that too I'm just giving men as an example so these young men come and they're so confused because they don't want to be like that and they sit in front of me and they've got all the tattoos to show everyone how strong and brave they are and they start crying because they feel so lost and they feel so worthless and like they're not a real man and when I start working with them and I tell them look I, I'm not big on women working with men I think men need to work with men it's hard to find men who work with men because they mostly want to work with women why because they can manipulate them more I'm sorry but it's true I can't tell you how many male therapists that I know of that have crossed the line with their female clients that's why they like their female clients I know that not all of them are like that but I can tell you now to those those therapists that are sitting there in shock listening to this and saying but I'm not like that aren't you are you honestly going to tell me that you don't sit there and there's a beautiful young girl and it's not passing through your mind that you're thinking about her or you think about her later? You know what covert abuse is. So you know you're putting an imprint on that young girl. Right? So are you really, really being honest with her? And don't think for a moment she's not picking up on it. Because I get plenty of young girls that tell me they went to someone and they felt really uncomfortable. Nothing happened, but they felt really uncomfortable. So if you can't do it with integrity, don't do it at all and just work with men. Or work with women you're not attracted to, older women or something. Right? I'm just saying. I know that sounds terrible, but I'm tired of it. I'm over it. I hear it all the time. I could tell you a thousand stories, literally. Out of curiosity, I'll just tell you one. It just popped in my head, so I'm going to tell you, right? You'll be horrified. Okay, so this young 19-year-old girl, she goes in to get a massage from this guy who believes he's communicating. He believes he's communicating with Archangel Michael. So she thinks she's heard about him, and she thinks, oh, my God, I'm going to go get a massage from a man who communicates with Archangel Michael. Oh, my God, this is going to be a heavenly experience. She's 19. He's like 42. Okay, so she goes in, she lays on the table. She's only in her knickers. And he goes down to her lower back and he says to her, oh, you're, you know, you're a bit stiff there, you're a bit rigid. And, you know, it feels like you've got a bit of a sexual block there. Really inappropriate to say to a 19-year-old girl. And so she, as most young girls are, when you feel a bit mm, like this, you, you're really honest, you know. So she goes, yeah, yeah, you know, I do feel a bit tense around that area. Yeah, yeah, you know. So what does he do? He lobs his dick out and rubs it along her back, then sticks it in her face and says to her, you need me to do this to unlock your frigidity. 
and your sexual attention. I mean, that girl froze, ran the hell out of there, did not report him, came to me in tears, and I'm like, you need to report him. Why didn't she? She was too ashamed. And she had no proof. And she'd gone there and taken a knickers off, uh, not a knickers, but a clothes off, and was there like that. She felt guilty because she chose to go to him. Bastard. Bastard is all I can say. And that's just one story. All right? And we all know them. We all know them. We all know. We've all worked in places where we've been pushed up against a wall and fingers shoved everywhere. I've had it happen to myself. Okay? We all know it. So when you violate a woman like that, you pay a price for that. Let me just tell you that. Because what you're violating is the giver of life. And you don't even realise it, fellas. So when a woman feels uncomfortable, listen to yourself, okay? When you feel uncomfortable, listen to yourself. You are not delusional. So let's get back to these young blokes. So anyway, they'd come and they'd tell me, you know, they felt like this. And uh, <clears throat> as I said, I don't really, uh, you know, as far as, um, I, I will do healing with men, but Sometimes I think they need, when it comes to their masculinity, they need to work with a male, but they're very hard to find. And the few that do charge huge amounts of money. They are out there, though, and there are good ones out there. There was a guy called Steve Bidoff, Bidoff in, in Australia, remarkable man. No problem with him. I had no problem with him. Remarkable. Right, So there are good ones out there, but for every good one, there's a thousand shitheads. So, <clears throat> you know, by the time they'd leave, they'd be crying because I'd reassure them what the masculine energy really is and show them that they are actually the epitome of it. And not only that, the courage and the strength it's taken for those beautiful men to hold their ground and not become an asshole is huge. And here they are thinking they're weak when they're the strongest men I know. And not only that, as a partner, they're brilliant. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the alpha guy, he'll run away as soon as there's a problem. But the sensitive guy will stay and he'll work, work through it with you. He'll love you. He'll nurture you. He'll allow you to surrender because he's not interested in dominating you. So to all you guys out there who are beautiful souls, just know that the strength and the courage that it takes for you not to resonate with a toxic male is amazing. And that doesn't mean you have to wear a dress. It doesn't mean you have to embrace your inner feminine to such a point that you're wearing a dress or a skirt or whatever, man skirt. It doesn't mean that at all. I, I, I've met men who look like bulldozers who, you know, I had a guy turn up at my door. Now, just picture this. If ever he's hearing this, darling, I know you, 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 you know. So this guy rings me and he goes, oh, look, I really need to see you, blah, 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 blah. And he was a friend of someone. So <clears throat> normally I don't even see people at my house unless I know them. And unless and, and women I wouldn't have a problem with, but men, it would have to be, you know, the husband of someone or someone that I know, right? Then I would see them at my house. But this guy rang and he was a friend of a <clears throat> someone I knew quite well. So I figured, oh, he must be okay. So I said, yeah. Anyway, I opened the door. <laughs> I open the front door and here's this guy. He's completely bald. He is covered in tattoos. His fa his whole body is, is a tattoo. Whole body. And his mouth, top and bottom, was completely gold. And he had gold. He had And he had piercings. He had everything, right? So his whole teeth were gold and he couldn't close his teeth properly. So he was standing at my door, fully tattooed with the gold, full on. These, these were absolutely gold teeth that he had um, 
what are they called, the posts, you know, he had all of his teeth removed and the posts put in. So this was not a grill, it was actual teeth, solid gold. And he couldn't close his mouth properly, so he was breathing all the time like this. His mouth was like this the whole time. And when I opened the door, my first instinct was to say, oh my God, I'm really sorry, I've overbooked myself, I can't see you today, perhaps another day. But my guides quickly came into my head and they said, no, it's okay, you need to see him. So I opened the door and I was pretty freaked out, right? I opened the door and normally I would take him into my office, my workroom, but I didn't. I kept him in the lounge room, <laughs> it was very weird. Kept him in the lounge room and I started to do this reading for him. So I was doing a reading. And it turned out, and then his grandmother came through, right? And his grandmother was telling me all this stuff, and I was like, and he's in tears, and he's telling me how much he loved his grandmother and how much he did for his grandmother. And this guy turned out to be the biggest baby in the sense of kind heart. He was so sensitive. He was so kind and so generous. And the reason he had all of this was to hide it. It was to hide it because he was so ashamed and he felt so worthless and, and um, unmasculine, if you like, because he had this sensitivity towards like poetry and all this stuff that was just, it was doing my head in as I was doing this reading for him. I was getting to know him more and more and more because you get to know people quite well with a reading, you know, or a healing and, uh, but particularly readings. And, and so I, I was, I thought, oh my God, I'm so grateful that I opened the door to this man and was able to give him this information that helped him so much because it was a lesson for me as well. Don't judge a book by its cover and listen to your heart more because, you know, my head, when I looked at him, my head was like, oh gosh, what's this? But my heart is the part that I communicate with, said, no, let him in. So I know that you guys, there's many of you, many of you, and you're good husbands, you're good fathers, you're amazing men. And you're fighting a battle just as much as the women are fighting a battle. And my heart goes to you and I thank you for holding your truth of what a real man is. Because you have more strength and more courage than most. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. And if you'd like to know more about me, you can go to my website, lovelightandtruth.com. There you can make an appointment with me or you can give a donation for these videos. You can join my meditation group on Facebook Live. Um, you'll find those details on my website. I'm really looking forward to communicating with you more and being inspired more by you and your needs, your questions and your love and your commitment to the planet most of all. Bye for now and have a beautiful, create a beautiful day with your life force, create money for you. And these are going to be other things I'm going to be teaching is how to, how to use that, you know, but I feel I need to do a, um, a kind of a group for that. I don't think that's sort of information I want to put out on the net like this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, have a beautiful day and I'll see you soon.